E-mini S&Ps continue the trend, closing lower for the fourth consecutive session in a row. Today, seeing a range of 43.99 all the way down to 43.57, closing the week out at 43.60 after a busy week, which included an FOMC meeting where the Fed didn't raise rates. However, the Fed chair reiterated the need to keep rates higher for longer, helping to push E-minis lower. The low of 43.57 today matches the low near the lows we saw back in mid-August. Again, E-minis lower today closing at 43.60. Now, what does this mean for volatility? Well, historically, volatility and equity indices have moved inversely. So as equity indices move lower, we see volatility moving higher. That's exactly what we saw this week. Volatility moving higher for most of the week. In fact, getting to the highest point since, wait for it, the middle part of August, when the last time we saw E-minis trading at these low levels. So as E-minis moved lower this week, we saw volatility moving higher. Lastly, let's talk about what we have next week. We get a mix of manufacturing and housing data. We also get the PCE data, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Report, sort of the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. I know CPI gets all the headline, but this is the one that the Fed looks at most closely. We also get a slew of Fed speakers that'll be coming out of the Fed blackout period after September FOMC, including the Fed chair himself, who will be speaking on Thursday at a town hall meeting with educators. And despite the form, the markets will continue. I will always be listening. To what the Fed chair has to say. So after a big move lower this week, taking E-minis all the way down to 43.60 in the lowest weekly close since August, we look ahead next week to a mix of manufacturing and housing data, PCE, and the Fed chair on Thursday.